a lot of unopened mail piled up in this box. Yes, it's Julian's post box. Now, just before I start, uh, really quickly, JLC PCB are having an e exhibition. They want to see you in 2020. 100% possibility to win prize. So I'm going to put a link uh, down in the description below, which you can follow to find out more about this. Also check out their uh, four layer PCBs for their $2 price. Okay, so let's start with this one. It's been in my post box for quite a while. It's a capacitor bracket. So the idea was to get some of these uh, capacitor brackets and screw them down onto a beat piece of wood. In the end, it turned out that um, I don't need this because I did it a different way, which I'm sure you've seen. Uh, one thing I want to check is whether this actually was the right size for the caps that I've got. So this is uh, one of the super caps. This is actually one of the 630 farad, which don't charge. It appears that they might be completely fake. But yeah, that's a good fit. Now on eBay, you can't get these capacitors anymore. I've not seen them uh, recently. So they may have been just a job lot. They may have been um, used actually. It's quite possible they came out of electric buses. Let's see if this fits around the 500 farad um, blue, sometimes called green cap capacitors. We'll need to head to the workshop for this. So here's the uh, two 500 farad uh, green cap capacitors and yes it appears that that clip would work for those as well so that's fine um, these are not charged at the moment shall I charge them up I've got a novel charging system which consists of this panel with a series bulb you plug that in oh that's not working because the wrong lights are switched on Let's go over here, uh, turn those off, turn those on. That bulb is now at maximum brightness. Because it's in series with my 12 volt lead acids and these caps, um, these caps will be at, well, zero volts. So they're producing effectively a dead short that this is going into. So this is at full brightness. As the voltage of these caps come up, then this bulb gets dimmer and also of course uh, the flashing LEDs should come on. It takes a minute or so and I think these are just starting to flash. Yes they are so the voltage on those caps is coming up enough so that the little flashing circuit, well the flashing circuit actually seems to run even before the LED shows any signs of brightness but yeah so those are coming up that bulb's gradually getting dimmer it's probably hard to tell and then I pull this plug out of here and I found that it just handily sits in this bracket here which is holding the wall together now I suppose I should say something about um, this I mean this was the eventual way I mounted the super cap so actually this thing wasn't needed this is more about me telling the latest stories about the super capacitor bluetooth speaker really now you'll notice that i've only got one of these ltc 3780 power supplies the other one's gone because it was just playing up and causing a lot of hassle um, so what i've done rather than shut one power supply off and have the other one continue I've now actually wired my paralleled opto isolator opto transistors, that's a 4K7 resistor, um, straight across the current control pot actually pins one and two, which is wiper and ground effectively. Uh, so now I charge this thing uh, through the fuse with this. I'm going to put it on this small lead acid battery, which is being charged from the bigger lead acid batteries. Let's connect that up. Uh, now you'll see that that gives, oh, can you see that? Well, over four amps, over five amps actually at the moment. Um, now that means that the current on the input here, because this is uh, 12 volts, is going to be much lower. Five amps coming out at a very low voltage. Now as the voltage on these capacitors comes up, 
So the power level, power of course on the input is the same as power on the output. So it effectively means the current on the input will start to rise quite markedly. And do, things do tend to get a little bit hot. These uh, diodes, I notice, they actually do get quite hot. They shouldn't be totally necessary, but I put them in because I was trying all sorts of different things because I was having problems with the uh, second power supply interacting with the first. I'm also having problems with the needle of this getting stuck if it goes up to 6 amps. Oops, it's not at 6 amps today, so we should be okay. Um, this will start to fall away as the capacitor voltages come up. I'll come back in a moment and show that. Right, I can just see faint glow on the blue LED there. Faint glow slightly brighter on the blue LED there. They haven't all come up yet, but it is now down to under one amp, but over half an amp. So it's kind of at about the right uh, position that I wanted cut here that 4k7 resistor I think um, it dropped too low when that was a dead short across the current control pot but yeah this is kind of working quite well I'll come back when all these lamps are on full strength so all the blue lights are on on the capacitors I'll just partially blot out the window um, they're all at slightly different brightnesses that one is on but yeah it's very dim so it takes about two or three minutes to get the first capacitor all the way up to uh, 2.5 volts. But of course, then as the current drops right down, it takes much longer to get all the other capacitors. And they always seem to come up in the same sequence because I guess they're all slightly different capacitors, or capacitances even. Um, yeah, the others probably five or six minutes to get them to come up and complete the job but um, yeah fundamentally this works this will now become the audio system for the workshop for things like the vocoder audio projects like that hmm I would say that solar panel is in full Sun wouldn't you right this is not the original listing I can't find it because that capacitor bracket has been in its envelope for over two years believe it or not but here are five pieces capacitor bracket 35 millimeter it even says vintage here uh, so you get five plus the nuts and bolts for eight dollars ninety free shipping and these come from vic audio one righty ho next up is this one and it is <laughs> from lee shop oh it's tiny it's a little bms Yes, it's a four cells in series BMS, a 4S BMS, as is this one, which has been hanging around for quite a while. And the timing is good because I've just started building a pack here and I'm planning to put this one on it. Uh, that goes there, that goes there. This one comes down to the midpoint, which is there. And then B plus and B minus go to these end points. But I could use this one. Now this one I had actually written on that envelope 5 amp BMS. So I guess that's what it was on eBay as. That probably makes this more like a mm, 10 amp BMS because they've doubled up the, um, the charge and discharge MOSFET switches. This one only seems to have one for charge and one for discharge. Uh, here also they've doubled up the current sense resistors this one has just the one the chips are entirely different let's have a look uh, this one which i've had for some time is the 8254aa which you can get a data sheet for this one that i've just opened is actually oh is that a ch367103 x or something like that i shall have to look up See if I can find a data sheet for that one. Now it looks like they're going to do a very similar job. Uh, what these things do is they monitor each cell, the voltage of each cell. And if while discharging one of the cells goes below a low threshold, might be three volts, it cuts off the discharge MOSFET. Or uh, alternatively, if while charging one of the cells, any of them, 
goes above a preset maximum, which might be 4.2 volts, it cuts off the charge MOSFET. It's likely both of these chips do exactly the same job. Um, they also do an if, while discharging, I believe only, the current exceeds a threshold uh, set by this resistor value, then the discharge MOSFET will cut off. But these don't do balancing. They have no balancing functionality. So if I'm to use either one of these boards, I would need an additional active balancer. Once again, this is probably not the listing I actually bought it from because it's probably been in the envelope for a long time. Uh, 4 amp to 5 amp 4S PCB BMS protection board for, well, four cells in series is what it means. Uh, this one's got free shipping, which I like. $1.71 this board, so it's ultra cheap. Uh, this one is DIY box. Okay, let's do one more. This one says one times resistor. No, I don't think so. It's lots times fuse. And uh, yeah, these are <laughs> absolute monster great things. Mm, let's have a look on my two centimeter squares. More than two centimeters that way. And yeah, even more, probably about 2.4 centimeters that way. Now these say on them F900, actually I think UF900. Pretty sure these are nine amp polyfuses. I can't remember why I bought these. I might have bought them actually just because they're so intriguing looking. Let's have a look at these on eBay. Well, here it is. Uh, still for sale by the original seller. 20 pieces RUEF 900 9 amp 30 volt PPTC poly switch resettable fuse. Uh, $5.49 for 20 pieces, free shipping. And these from TK Electronics 2016. Uh, another item, no, these are for 2019, not quite as old as the uh, capacitor mount. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess these polyfuses could be used in conjunction with the BMS uh, boards. The capacitor mount clamp, not so much. And so these are today's post bag items. Don't forget JLC PCB's e exhibition. Link down below. Big thanks to my patrons. If you want to join Patreon and become a patron, you can click this link here. Another couple of videos up here if you want to watch more of my shenanigans. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, you can click this link here. Cheerio!